Hello, I'm Pastor Jeff Carlson of the First Presbyterian Church of Battle Creek. Together with my colleagues, Pastor Pat Weatherwax, Music Director Jody Manlow, and Video Editor Sandy Carlson, we are putting together a series of weekly videos entitled Worship Moment. These will include an inspirational hymn, prayer, scripture, and a brief message. We hope you find these videos to be a source of encouragement. May grace and peace be yours in abundance. Hosanna, say it with me, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let's pray. We praise you, O God, for your redemption of the world through Jesus Christ. As we enter Holy Week and cannot gather in our church building, may we be mindful that we are your church wherever we are. Turn our hearts to you for remembering the life, death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ. And united with that same Christ, may we one day enter in triumph that city not made by human hands, the new Jerusalem, eternal in the heavens, where with you and the Holy Spirit, Christ lives and reigns in glory forever and ever. Bless our time together, and the, although we cannot see you or each other, May our spirits sense you and sense the fellowship we share. And may the words of our mouths and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Hello, church family. It's Jodine here. I was thinking, let's try something a little different today. Our hymn is number 197 in our New Glory to God hymnal. 197, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. I'm going to aim my camera at the music. And then you can read the lyric with me. You can read all three verses. You can see the notation. And we can sing it together that way. Um, if, it, if this was a normal Palm Sunday and we were in our sanctuary, we would have palm branches. We would wave them up in the air while we sing. Um, but we're at home and we don't have palm branches. So I would suggest just wave your hands. You might want to lift your hands up. You might want to stand while we sing. But whatever you do, please sing it with me. Hosanna, loud Hosanna. <laughs> Washington has shared her prayer for a pandemic uh, to the public domain. So let's pray together. Holy God, 
may we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health or paying their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close remember those who have no options. May we who have had to cancel our trips remember those who have no place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for a quarantine at home remember those who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose love. During this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. We remember. We are one in Christ, so let's pray with the whole world the disciples' prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 12, verses 12 through 16. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. This worship moment video is dated for April 5th, 2020. Many churches recognize this day as Palm Sunday. Some churches, such as many Orthodox churches, will recognize April 12th as Palm Sunday since they use a different calendar. But regardless of what day is set aside to recognize Palm Sunday, it commemorates an event that took place in the life of Jesus of Nazareth. It is called Palm Sunday because palm branches were waved to greet Jesus during his very public processional into Jerusalem. It is sometimes referred to as the Sunday of the Triumphal Entry. However, for the first 12 centuries of Christianity, this term was never used. It is often called Passion Sunday, whereas Palm Sunday recalls Jesus' celebrated entry into Jerusalem. Passion Sunday recalls the events that unfolded over the next few days, especially Jesus' suffering and death, events collectively named the Passion, a term based on the original Latin expression, to suffer. Some call this Donkey Sunday, <laughs> where <laughs> Jesus, Jesus rode into Jerusalem in a manner described as humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt, the fulfillment of the prophecies of Zechariah. Now, Jesus riding into the city on a young donkey was symbolic of peace. Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry, Passion Sunday, Donkey Sunday. Of all the names and suggested names for this day, the one that speaks to me the most is 
Confusion Sunday. Confusion Sunday. The source for this idea comes from Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits, who in their early days led the Counter-Reformation. In fact, Ignatius was responsible in part for John Calvin having to flee France for his very life. But it turns out Ignatius was not wrong about everything. In fact, he was right about a great many things, including, I think, Palm Sunday. He told his followers that at the beginning of Holy Week, they should pray for confusion. This is because it is for our sins Jesus will die, and we cannot embrace that fact with cold rationality on the one hand or complacent sentimentality on the other. It should hit us like the proverbial two-by-four to the head. Traditionally, on Palm Sunday, we pretend to be the crowd that cheers Jesus, even waving actual palm leaves. Then, later in the week, we, on Friday, we, we, we pretend to be the crowd that wants his blood. This raises the question, how exactly are we supposed to feel during Holy Week? Joyfully sad? Depressingly giddy? It's very confusing. It is staggering to think that the God who created the universe could come so close to us that we could see him, smell him, touch him, and kill him. Praise God and hail to the King, so he was acknowledged on that first Palm Sunday, so we welcome him into our midst today. For we know what the first Palm Sunday crowd did not know, that Jesus was coming to die for the life of the world. This story, this story is not about palm branches. It is about the palms and feet of the Savior. The hand that once held the universe was fastened to the Roman gibbet with a rusty nail. This is so, so difficult to grasp, and even more so when we realize his purpose and motivation for doing it. He died that we might live, and he did it out of love. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This is the confusion of an unearned gift. This is the confusion of unconditional love. This is the confusion of sorrow turning into joy. The world needs more such confusion. Let's do our part. Why not start today on Confusion Sunday? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.